Hi, this is James with Northern Arizona Wind & Sun. Today we're going to talk about wiring and configuring a MultiPlus 3000 inverter system. Okay, so when you're going to update the firmware and program your inverter, you're gonna to wanna to make sure the inverter is on, uh, powered up and turned on. You're gonna to wanna to make sure there's a VE, uh, VE bus cable into the VE bus port and nothing else is connected. That includes the color control or the VE bus Bluetooth dongle, nothing else to be connected to the inverter while you're doing this. Okay, so we're gonna open up the Victron Connect program. You can download this from the Victron website. And we're gonna go ahead and plug in the MK3 programming module, or the MK3 to the eBus um, module to the USB port on the charging, or on the computer. And if everything goes well, we should be able to see the inverter come online. Go ahead and go into the inverter. All right, so this is the overview of the actual inverter. What's live going on right now, this is input, output, battery voltage, current. To update the firmware, we're gonna go over here to the gear. We're gonna click enable settings. We're gonna put in a secret password. Call your rep and they'll give you that password. That allows you to enable the uh, this uh, to enable configuring settings. All right, so this this here is the overview for the inverter. Currently, we have uh, what's going on. Uh, this is the AC input limits. The inverter's on. It's currently inverting. This is the battery voltage. Uh, this gives you more details as to what's going on. So you have the AC input, current frequency. There's no AC input, so it doesn't show up here. Uh, this is the AC output. We don't have any load, so it's not representing anything. And here's the overall battery voltage and current. To update the firmware, you're going to go over here and click this gear. Then you're going to go over here and click these three little dots. Click product info. This is the current firmware that the inverter is on, this 4.30, and this is the available firmware. So you can go here and click update. Double click on the firmware, click update, click OK, and then it's going to go ahead and update the firmware. Okay, so the firmware is updated, inverter's back online. Should be able to click continue here. It's going to re retrieve the information. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and configure the inverter for some lithium batteries. And go over here, click on the gear, under the general settings. This is in an RV, this particular application, so we'll go ahead and set it up for that specifically. Um, this is the inverter frequency, we'll leave it at 50 hertz. The AC input limitations, um, we'll allow the customer to change those values dynamically. Nothing really needs to be set on the general tab. Under the grid tab, being that this uh, this is actually in an RV. One of the settings that you'll likely want to turn off is this UPS function. It will cause a major issue with um, charging batteries uh, from a generator. So turn that off. Otherwise, nothing else really needs to be adjusted within this setting. Under the inverter tab, I'm going to come in here, we're going to adjust the low battery cutout. Um, for this particular project, I'll just set it to 12 volts. And uh, we'll set this to 12 and a half volts. Uh, the pre-alarm at 12 and a half will be fine as well. You can go away now. 
That'll likely pop up if your uh, battery voltage is below the pre-alarm. So we triggered a pre-alarm because by default it wanted the value up much higher. Under the uh, the AES setting here, this is pretty interesting. We're going to go ahead and and set this for the for the client. This will cut the inverter's power, like uh, no load power consumption, down considerably, but still allow you to have uh, AC output. Go to the charger settings. We'll configure this for a lithium battery. First thing you want to do is come down here, turn on lithium batteries. This is going to adjust to several settings that are not applicable for other chemistries. We don't need temperature compensation. So we'll go ahead and disable that. Uh, we'll adjust absorption time to an hour. Make sure that there's a fixed charge curve. Set the battery voltage values to the appropriate voltage recommended by the manufacturer of the battery. And that takes care of most of the settings that are needed on a conventional RV application. Go ahead and reset the inverter. That'll save the settings. And then you're good to go. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and comment.